So now we are at the toilet and here it is. Just gonna change the siphon. Pick one of these up from the tool station this morning. Should just be a nice easy one. Although I think the handle may need replacing, well, the screw. So I've got one just in case, because last time I done one, it snapped on me, the actual spindle. But it shouldn't be anything too taxing. And then, boiler service on that as well. So yeah, let's get some footage of it. Put it all together. Let's empty this as best we can. to do it with the automatics just get enough pull on there and we are in slide that over there All a little dry out so we can see it's not leaking there she is in there So the customer's problem was that they'd have to pump that a few times in order to get it to flush. But we're good. And no signs of any leak. So we're all good. On to the boiler. I have just spent two minutes looking for my analyzer in my bag all over the place. Couldn't find it anywhere. It's actually stressing me out a little bit. Lo and behold, I'd already taken it out of the bag. So yeah, it's not Monday morning, but it feels like a Monday morning. So this lab. So let's capture some bits of this boiler service. Um, just be some little snippets on this one of cleaning out the condensate and analyzer checks. Just some basics because, quite frankly, you can't film everything. As you can see, these aren't the most spacious of boilers to work inside. You can, once you've done a few of them, start to find ways to make life a bit easier. But one thing that's always a pain is the condensate trap. As you can see me trying to take it now, it's always a lot of wiggling to do. Anyone else not? A massive fan of these traps. Ugh. Now I soaked my analyzer. <sighs> One of those days. Always when you're filming as well, the most basic stuff. Just doesn't go right. I can't even blame using one hand today. Because on this one, I'm using two. You would have thought it was doing the toilet thing that everything would have got soaked, not doing the boiler service. So, great. So, just about to go into the next job and this one is, I'm trying to get the boiler back up and running using this temperature sensor, possibly a recon PCB as well. It's a Potterton Suprema, but ladies having a full house renovation, which I am doing the central heating system next week. Well, everything except the pipes feeding the rads. 
um, new boiler, new location, system to combi conversion, well, open vented to combi conversion, and all new rads. So I'm doing that next week or the week after. That'll probably be in another video on its own, I would say. And yeah, just trying to get her up and running just to give myself a bit of breathing space because she's just moved in there and it's cold. Um, there's not even a motion heater for the hot water. So yeah, when I go in, I'll try and get some little sneak previews of how it is. She has had the work start, which is a bit annoying. Um, nothing she can do, obviously. But something like that, I prefer to do in an empty house. So yeah, let's see. I told the builders to leave for a week. Maybe I tell them I've got to do it and I've got COVID or something. So they'll have to close site for a week. So as always when filming, it doesn't always go to plan. And I wasn't able to get any footage in there. Um, just, to be honest, just too busy going through the plans and everything. But next week when I start, should be starting Monday or Tuesday, probably Tuesday we will get everything done, a little show of everything before it goes in and before things start to change because this house is going to look completely different. Um, yeah, that's it for today. Not a lot to do. Got some administrative bits to do, boiler to order. So maybe again, I'll get some footage of that. And yeah, little day or week in the life of me. So now we're in the job to replace the filter. As you can see, it is leaking quite badly. So we're going to put another filter on there. Hoping to whack a boiler mat in there, but not sure if it will fit. So, yeah, it's not a lot of play on the pipes. Um, let's get some footage of it. So I know you can replace the seals on this and I know I could have just got another TF1 or even the brass version, but the client wanted something that'd be smaller and not take up much space either. So the Boiler Mag XL was perfect for this. Nice and smart and it's given the customer more space under there because the other one was hanging down. So success. So filter's done, boiler mag went in there, customer's happy because they wanted some excess space as well. And it doesn't have the drop down bit, it just sits out straight. So that was a lot better on that one. And now I'm off to fit a column rad. Not sure that I'll get much footage of that. It's kind of nowhere for the camera. Um, the lady works as often on meetings and calls and whatnot as well. So I don't really want to film that, but also it's a column rad, which stresses me out. So that's probably the bigger reason why I don't want to film it. But maybe I'll get something. Maybe it'll be an interesting title to be. Look how this went wrong. So we shall see. But yeah, let's go on a little drive. I have to highlight here that I didn't do the initial pipe work or the ordering of the radiator. Basically, the client was having an extension done. There was a plumber there doing some work, but he messed up with the measurements and so ended up with pipe work having to be altered above surface. So customer was working in there, um, so I couldn't really get any footage fitting the radiator. But there is a little video that you should have just seen where it's done basically so that's another one done done for today might pop to city plumbing and return some bits from there 
and then book some working for tomorrow because I've actually not got anything at the moment tomorrow. So yeah, let's get stuff booked in, tie up some loose ends before next week. So I've come to this job and there is no hot water. Heating works okay, but no hot water. I'm gonna guess it's the two port valve, but let's do some electrical testing. Here you've got the two. This one is going into cylinder. So let's work at the one on. This is an engineer's best friend in terms of diagnosis. Let's make sure there's demand. Should be because the cylinder's cold. Overheat's not popped. We'll turn that up. So then we want to check, follow the wire. And what we're looking for is... Sorry, I've had to switch this to a voiceover at a later date because my microphone battery died. Let's keep going. So what we're looking for is the wire that traces back to the zone valve. And then we have our orange, brown, gray, blue, and earth. Now earth and blue are neutral and earth, obviously, so we can ignore those. Orange goes to the pump and valve. Gray is the permanent live, and the brown is the switch live coming from or linked to whatever component is then before the zone valve. So to test the zone valve, we need to look for 240 volts on the brown switch live wire. If we've got 240 volts there, but not 240 volts at the orange, that means that the component previously to the zone valve is sending power. The zone valve's getting the power, but not passing it on, which indicates a faulty zone valve. If we don't have 240 volts at the brown wire, that would indicate that there's an issue with the component beforehand not sending power to it. In this case, the cylinder stack. So I bought one of these in preparation. When I replace the zone valve, I always manually lock open the new one and the old one. It just finds that it's a lot easier to fit it on the spindle and manage to get your screws in. So I would always suggest doing that. You don't have to, it just makes life a little bit easier. These are really easy to replace. Once you've done one, it starts to get easier. It's a bit of a fear of going back into the wiring center, having loads of wires. I like to replace one wire at a time rather than just pulling the whole thing out that way you know if anything else does come out and you can see where it's come from and literally just like for like orange out new orange in old blue out new blue in old earth out new earth in and then you won't have any issues with it
Don't worry guys, that probably looked a lot worse than it was. The floor was protected and I know the water was clean. So I've recently power flushed the system. On the floor was a plastic bath sheet and a polyurethane like decorator sheet as well. So I knew there'd be no issues and sometimes a snatch is necessary because you might, like this one, the system was a nightmare to balance. Um, you might drag blockages in through the system. So sometimes a snatch is the best scenario or best you know, work in practice, shall we say. With that one, you probably saw I had to take it off again and switch the valve round. That was because normally you'd fit them, obviously, with the valve facing upwards. But because she had the shelf above and she didn't want to lose it, I had to fit it outwards. So I got the bi-directional valves. And yeah, just autopilot when I'd done it. So I had to switch it back the other way. So yeah, please like, subscribe, follow, do whatever you can. Really appreciate you watching so thanks for being here see you on the next one